In this video, we're going to learn about class templates in C++. Class templates allow us to define a generic class that represents a potential family of classes. Class templates can help us reduce the amount of duplication in our code. So for example, if we want to make a class to represent an array of integers and provide member functions for working with that array of integers, that's going to look very, very similar, basically identical to a class that does the same with strings. So for example, we could say here class int array. Then we could have a public member variable int array 10. So this int array class will allow us to make objects that represent arrays of integers of size 10. And we'll also have some public member functions that provide supporting operations. So for example, an operation to fill this array with a particular value. We'll say here void fill int value, and we'll make a loop that goes through and fills this array with that value. So here we'll say array at index i is equal to value. We'll make another public member function that returns a reference to the array element at a given index. So we'll say int and to return a reference at int index. And we'll return the array at this provided index. And we're going to be returning a reference to that element of the array. So it could be modified, for example, in the place where this member function is called. Now here we have this class for representing in arrays of size 10. If we then wanted to have a class to represent string arrays of size 10, and also have that class contain the same sorts of member functions for filling the array with particular values and returning a reference to the element in the array at a particular index, we could do that by basically copying and pasting this and changing the types. So we could copy this, paste it here, and then say string array, string array, and then down here we'd have string instead of int, and here we'd have string there. The problem is this code here is basically identical to this code here. Really the only difference is the type. Here we have int and here we have string. Whenever we have a duplicated code like this, we would ideally like to refactor our code somehow to remove that duplication. The problem with duplication is that it makes our code harder to maintain. So for example, if later on, one of these functions has to change, we would probably need to change it in two places. We'd have to change it here and here as well. And that's a problem because not only do we need to make the same change twice, we need to remember that and we need to be aware of it. And it's actually a very easy thing to forget, which may result in a bug if we do forget it. So code duplication makes our code more difficult to maintain. And very often it's a good practice to remove code duplication when possible. Class templates allow us to remove this sort of duplication by defining a generic class that represents a family of potential classes. So for example, we could say this, template, and then we'll have this open angle bracket and then type name T like this. Now we'll actually copy and paste this. So I'm going to copy this here and I'll paste it here. And I'll just call this class array. Now, instead of string here, I'm going to say T instead of string here, I'll put T and instead of string here, I'll put T. So what we've done here is made a generic class using this template prefix. This template prefix, defines a template parameter T. We can also call T a type variable. Now, when we attempt to use this class template and actually instantiate objects, we're going to supply a type argument, for example, int or string. The compiler is going to recognize how we use this class template. It's going to go out and create specific classes for the types that we supply as arguments. At that point, when we supply an argument of a particular type like int or string, 
It's as if C++, the compiler, has gone out and created a class and replaced all the instances of T in this class with that type that's been provided. So for example, if down here we said array, open angle bracket, int, int r, this will actually, at compile time, have the C++ compiler go out and use this class template. It's going to replace all the occurrences of T here in the class template with int. And then at runtime, as the program is actually executing an instance of that type specific class that was created using the class template at compile time is going to be created. And we can then use that object. So we could say int r dot fill, and we'll fill all the elements of this array with the value two. Then we could output the element at index four by using the at member function. So we could say int r dot at index four, and then we'll also output a new line here too. And then if we save and run our program here, we'll get int array at index four is set to two. And we're using this type specific class that was created at compile time using our class template here. And at runtime, when the actual executable program is running, we're creating an instance of that type and we're using the member functions, but they're all going to work specifically with ints because the C++ compiler went out and created a specific version of the class for us with that type. So now we can really get rid of these two classes up here. We don't really need them anymore. We can just use our class template instead. And we've gotten rid of all of that duplicated code. Now we can have multiple parameters in our template prefix here, including a parameter like this, int length. We could then use our class template to represent arrays of different lengths. So for example, instead of 10 here, we could say length. And instead of 10 here, we could say length. Now down here, I would have to provide an additional argument. In this case here, I could say maybe 10 or maybe five. This would then create an array class that's going to have int as the type in place of t. And in place of length, we're going to use the value five. We could save this and run it and we'll get the same result as before. Only now we've made our class template even more flexible. So for example, we could say array string eight and then str r. And now we have an array of strings of eight elements in length. So for example, we could say str r dot fill and then abc. And now all eight elements in that array should be set to the string abc. We could then say str r dot at and we'll say index six is equal to the string one, two, three. So this one index six should have the string one, two, three instead. We could make a loop to go through and print out all the strings in this array. So we'll have I go from zero up until eight by one, and then we'll output each element in the array. We'll say here, strr open bracket, we'll output I, we'll output a close bracket and a colon, and then we'll output the actual value at index I, followed by an inline. So this loop here will output all the array elements, one after the other, followed by an inline. And if we save and run our program and check out the output, we get all of the elements of our array set to the string ABC, except for the one at index six. That one is set to the string one, two, three. So again, it's working. And what's going on here is that again at compile time, the C++ compiler recognizes 
that we're using our class template with the type string and the length eight. It's gonna go out and replace T with string and replace length with eight, creating a new class for the purposes of our program using the class template. Then at runtime, that's when the actual object instance is going to be created using that type that the compiler made using our class template. We can kind of think of class templates as having the C++ compiler do some of our work for us because it effectively goes out and makes classes for us based on the template. Now the array class that's actually built into the C++ standard library more or less works just like this, just as we've done things here. One important consequence of the compile time versus runtime distinction is that we can't use something like a variable here for the length. So for example, let's say we make a variable X and let's say we get some user input using C in and we set X based on user input. We can't say here array double X XR. This won't work. If we try to save and run this, we'll get an error. It says here, non type template argument is not a constant expression. And the problem here is that X is going to be determined at runtime based on this user input here. It's a variable. It's something that can change during the execution of our program. The problem is templates are used by the compiler at compile time. They're not determined at runtime. So the compiler needs to be able to look at this and generate a class that can be used at runtime. It can't do that if there's a variable here whose value is going to be determined at runtime. So for this length argument here, it needs to be a constant expression for this to work because the compiler could look at a constant expression here at compile time and figure out how to make the class using the class template with that information. So this is how we can use class templates in C++ to represent a potential family of classes and reduce duplicated code in our program. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.